This episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks is brought to you by Gigabyte's AMD X570 ARS motherboards for third generation AMD Ryzen 3000 processors. Hit the link in the description below for more details. On this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we'll be talking about the brand new Core i9 9900KS, NVIDIA's new Shield, and GTX 1660 Super, our awesome giveaway with Falcon Northwest, and a whole lot more. Welcome, everybody. So I am Marco Cipetta with HotHardware.com. Our fearless leader, Dave, is not around today, but uh, Brittany and Chris and I figured we'll do this podcast anyway and have a little fun without the big boss. Brittany, how the heck are you doing today? I'm all right. How are you guys doing? Any Halloween plans over in your neck of the woods? So we're supposed to have really crappy yeah, weather we, uh, here we in Canada, <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to play out. My kids have their costumes ready, and uh, we have plans to walk the neighborhood, but we'll we'll see how it all shakes out. How about you guys? Yeah, we have the same. I, I'm, I'm guessing we're all under the same weather system here up in Maine as well. Um, but our plan is usually to carve pumpkins, eat pizza, and watch Hocus Pocus. So that'll be tomorrow's uh, schedule. That, that sounds like a fantastic plan. Chris, it'll will you good. participate in the in the pumpkin carving, or is that Brittany's job? <laughs> he, I'm the leader, but he's actually better at it than I am. Well, he's the man. <laughs> That's how these he's, things go. He's much better at car- <laughs> he's much more better with uh, hand eye coordination than I am. So. <laughs> I got you. I'm, I'm just yeah. messing around. I'm sure you're you're perfectly adequate at the pumpkin carving. Pretty. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So we should probably get started. Yeah. Um, there was a whole lot happening this week. Um, I've actually, I, I, since Wednesday of last week, have finished four launch articles. It's like an insanely busy season uh, for some reason uh, this October. But we will start, I guess I'll kick things off with just a quick take on Intel's Tremont uh, architecture. So all the way back, I think it was December last year, Dave went to Intel's Architecture Day, and we have an article up on the site about that. And at Intel's Architecture Day, they talked about a uh, SOC called Lakefield, which uses Intel's Foveros technology, where you can stack logic and other devices onto a single package. And on that Lakefield SOC, they talked about a new uh, low-power CPU core called Tremont, but Intel didn't really disclose any of the deep architectural details about the Tremont processor. It's it's really the, the replacement, the follow-on for Intel's Atom processors, those low-power processors that were in tablets and some phones way back in the day. But Tremont is a, is a complete departure, and it's much, much higher performance. So we put up a couple of pages on the site uh, detailing the Tremont architecture. What makes this uh, architecture special first is the low power. I think it's going to scale from two watts on down. There was a demo at Architecture Day of the whole Lakefield chip playing 1080p video. I think it was sucking less than two watts down at, in that demo. I, I might not have that perfect, but something like that. It's also the chip that landed inside the Surface Duo that's coming uh, next year. But the the, the Tremont core is, is a six wide out of order instruction CPU. So just right there, it's going to be a higher performance chip typically than the Atom. Um, 10 execution ports, four wide allocation, uh, dual load stores, and they're going to be a, a quad core configuration on this processor with up to four and a half megs of L2 cache. But the configuration, it, it can be tweaked depending on Intel's customer down to a single core with uh, much less cache uh, if necessary. And all told, all of the architecture changes, um, on average, a 30% performance uplift versus uh, the Goldmont Plus that was in really the fastest atoms that the most recently released Atom and Celeron and Pentium processors. So uh, Tremont looking very strong for those low power mobile devices like the Surface Duo. Brittany, you saw the Surface Duo. What do you think of that device? Um, it was, I mean, it was good. I, I mean, I don't have too many strong opinions about it just because I didn't really spend a whole lot of time with it. But um, I think you're, you're a particular art or the, the article we have here is a pretty like interesting breakdown of that architecture. So unfortunately, I don't really have too many comments on it. But um, I think it's, you know, it's neat. It has a lot of potential. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Yeah. I, I didn't get any time hands on at the Microsoft event with the duo. They yeah. had it, you know, way back behind ropes. But, you know, the Intel Atom processors, they're, 
they're surprisingly pervasive in all these little tiny set top boxes and low power mini PCs and stuff like that. And to to get a thirty now, th- they've never had the best reputation. But I will say, like I loved messing around with some of these Minix mini PCs recently, and the more recent quad core Atoms with the latest builds of Windows t- Windows Ten. Even with like four gigs of RAM and a small SSD, they're surprisingly usable. Like surprisingly usable. Yeah, like, that's good. If you're not doing anything heavy, it it tooling totally on the desktop, it feels okay. So to get a thirty percent performance uplift at, on average, some of those some workloads it was much higher. You know, at at such a low power envelope, it looks like Intel is going to make a nice push into that low power space again. So could yeah, be no, could be really interesting. That's I mean that's awesome like you said the 30% increase is definitely um definitely valuable and like you mentioned you're not going to be able to let's say edit a video or something like that but it definitely has its place in the market and it has its purpose. Exactly and you know yeah. Lakefield has Sunny Cove on there too so it will have a high performance core as well for other stuff so interesting stuff we have no uh, independent data we're relying on everything Intel sent right. us. But, you know, we'll know soon enough, hopefully uh, within the next few months. But not much else to talk there. That's real nuts and bolts stuff. Let's let's talk about a really cool little product. Um, I recently got a chance to look at the new NVIDIA Shield TV for 2019. Brittany, why don't you summarize yeah, this? Yeah, I'll break I'll it. I mean, this will be, no, it's okay. It'll be the shortest introduction. And uh, please do add, since you're the one who had the experience with it. <laughs> so, from my understanding of the NVIDIA Shield TV, it's kind of um, a streaming stick on steroids, is, is kind of my interpretation of it. Um, it is, it, it includes a, um, Excuse me. It includes a Tegra X, uh, X1 Plus processor, um, so it's you know more powerful than ever. Um, it also, what I thought was really interesting about it is that it used artificial or uses artificial intelligence in order to scale videos from. Um, basically from linear to 4K, which I thought was kind of a neat um, advancement. And um, it seems particularly useful not only for streaming um, your favorite TV shows, going on to Netflix, it it looks like it'll also be included with Disney Plus. So if that's something you're interested in, that would be uh, something to consider, but also advanced Android games and then um, gameplay broadcasting to Twitch. So it looks like the type of device that can be really multifaceted, um, especially if you're interested in both streaming um, um, shows and all that good stuff, and also streaming gaming. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to that, Marco? Yeah. So I mean, you you summarize you summarize it perfectly. There, there's two versions. There's yes, you know the cylindrical model. That. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm a little sick, everybody. I'm sorry if I cough on everyone here. Um, the cylindrical <laughs> version is what I actually got to review. Right. Um, but there's also a pro. The processor inside is the same, right? And the software inside is the same. The difference between the pro and the cylindrical one is the Pro has three gigs of RAM and will support some of the more advanced Android games. But in terms of the streaming capabilities and the video output, they're both essentially identical. Now, I loved the original Shields. I have them on every TV in my house. I've written about them um, on hot hardware a bunch of times. The original Shield, in my opinion, was the best streaming device available. It was really high performance. Um, there was a huge modding community around them for you know putting emulators on them. You could stream from a GeForce enabled PC. You know your PC games from another room to your Shield or use GeForce Now. Like tons of cool features. Plus one of the best Android TV streamers. Now with this one, you end up with a lower power but faster processor, a much better remote. So the remote is the remote on the original Shield is was this little flat device and it had a slider for like adjusting volume. This new one's got dedicated buttons with backlighting. It's much beefier and uses uh, AAA batteries, so you don't have to like worry about charging it or uh, or even worry about losing it because it's got this like funky triangular shape. And the output from the Shield, as you mentioned, there is a new upscaling mode that uses AI to improve the quality. And it's really stark. It's really it's hard to show it in the article. I have some screenshots, and it's yeah, obvious I in the your screenshots. Pictures, yeah, I thought the pictures like just spoke a thousand words right there. With the, the effects of the artificial intelligence, were really impressive. Yeah, and like that was just yeah. like the mainstream like automatic mode. What's really cool, like this was like a funny story when I was getting uh, briefed on it by Nvidia. They had a demo mode where you can have a slider go back and forth to show the difference like immediately between the the typical scaler and the AI scaler. And that demo was so cool 
that Nv- the NVIDIA CEO told them, you got to put that feature in for consumers who want to just try it. So it's <laughs> in there. You can literally play with it a little bit. Yeah, you can enable yeah. demo mode and slide back and forth, which could be handy if you're tuning your setup and you want to see how it looks. Right. But yeah, you know, the, the output, it, it's a stark difference. Now, anytime you use AI to upscale something or use AI to, to change an image, there is some estimation involved. So you of might course. see some artifacts yeah. here and there. But if you're sitting back from your TV, if, to my eyes, it looked so much better. And I thought the original shields were the best. And these new ones uh, are just like... Really take it up there's, a notch. There's no reason to look at another streamer unless like you're sucked into the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> if you're looking at an Android TV device, my opinion, you really have to look at the shield. Now, the, the cylindrical one is the lowest price shield TV yet. It's 149 So it's not cheap versus like a Roku or a cheap Fire Stick. But right. so much more capable, and the pro version one ninety nine. And then I want to add too. Um, according to your article, the Nvidia Shield devices are the first media streamers with four K <laughs> Dolby Vision HDR and Dolby um, Atmos support. Is that correct? Yes. So yeah. So that's th- something that's, to consider <clears throat> too for consumers as well. That's something typical of Nvidia. They're so right. on top of the software updates, and you know, Absolutely. graphics and video are their heritage. So they're they're typically out in front of that. The original Shield was the first four K HDR Netflix device as well. Um, so just, just a a really strong streamer. I wish there was a, like my camera here, even if I videoed it on my TV, you wouldn't appreciate, uh, how nice the output is from the shield. But if you can, you know, hit, hit a store that has one, or if you're thinking of buying a shield, just do it, give it a shot. (laughs) It has Marco's seal of approval. It has the stamp. come personally to your house. (laughs) Editor's choice stamp on it. Set it up, editor's choice. We have a couple of questions. Um, so how to connect it to a PC. Uh, Devum's asking how to connect it to a PC. If you have a, a GeForce GTX um, graphics card in your PC and you're on the same network as your Shield, you can actually... It, it, well, you need this... I should say you need the, this, the controller for Shield or an Xbox One controller or a PS4 controller connected to the Shield. Like, you'll want to use a game controller. The new Shields don't include one. You'd have to purchase one separately. But you can literally, your PC will launch the game and stream it to the Shield, and you can play it on your TV using the remote um, with very, very little latency. It works surprisingly well. But, yeah. So anything else you want to add to the Shield, Britt? You good? Go ahead. Yes, Christopher's been trying to jump in. (laughs) Right. So you have like a couple, it, it, it enables a few things. So what NVIDIA found with the, the original scaler in the shields was because the shield was outputting to 4K to a TV, right? It always used the upscaler in the shield. Now, some high-end TVs had better dedicated hardware upscalers. So what some users of the shield would do would turn the output down to 1080p and then use the TV scaler to get the better output on the screen and video is like no we can do better most of the time when you're streaming video the tegra is sitting there idle let's use those cpu resources and you know increase image quality so that's what they did they fed a you know a bunch of video streams to their to their cloud to analyze you know for their uh, ai model and using that now you can leave the stream outputting at 4k but any 1080p 30 stream or a lower quality stream it won't go to 1080p 60 yet but it might um it might be enabled in the future will literally just automatically be upscaled using the ai upscaler and if you notice any artifacts you can shut it off you can switch to the traditional uh, upscaler and even that one has been improved versus the original so just literally all around uh, improvements um to the shield It doesn't apply to gaming. It's for it's for video streams. Yeah. So this, I think, it'd probably be fair to say then, if you are into competitive gaming, this might not necessarily be a way to stream, but more for enjoying, you know, certain games. Like we have a quite a few, a, quite a list on here of games included, like Half Life Two, Portal, uh, Metal Gear Rising Revenge, you know, all that type of stuff. So it, I mean, it sounds like you could use it, but maybe not necessarily if you're like a Fortnite champion. <laughs> Right, so it's funny. You, there, right. Fortnite is actually available on there. But oh, if is you, it? Okay. Yeah, the, the Shield Pro 
the reason so we have uh, chris some people are saying that your mic's not working i can hear you but i don't know if it's going out to the stream um but yes, those those um, advanced Android games were basically like AAA PC games that have been ported for native Android. Okay. That one you need the Shield Pro with three gigs and it, you know performance Got is it. good. Um, but streaming, let's say from a PC or from GeForce Now, it's really just taking in a video feed, right. sending back the controls. Testing and, you one know. Too. Guys, did you just hear Chris? Because I yeah, can, can hear. Yeah, can everyone him. hear Christopher? <laughs> I, I guess not. <laughs> we will Testing. we'll try for the next segment I, so I, I, uh, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. <laughs> no i was gonna say let's we should probably jump to the next segment right um, oh he said he's back anyway, you're back yes so there we go so if you're interested in the uh nvidia shield tv know that marco sings its praises and maybe you should add it to your holiday list <laughs> yes get an nvidia shield if you're looking at a streaming device cut your cord get a shield cut it. pay for netflix amazon prime disney plus you're set you're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should probably move on. Let's talk right. about one other uh, NVIDIA product that launched the day after the new Shield. The brand new GTX 1660 Super. So GeForce GTX 1660 Super uh, actually lands right in between the, the vanilla 1660 and the 1660 Ti. I'm going to hold one up here. Oh, Chris, I got the pictures up. I don't have to hold up one of the cards, even though I have them right next to me. So you can if you want. Well, all right. So here, here is the Asus card. There's the, the pretty Asus card that uh, you had the picture up for. And I also have the Gigabyte card next to me. The Gigabyte card is pretty badass with the triple fan set up. So there is the Gigabyte version. Ooh, it's, it's as long as my giant ah. head. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the GTX 1660 Super is sort of like a hybrid of the TI and and the original 1660. It has the same 1408 CUDA cores as, as a standard uh, 1660, um, the same 22 SMs, the same 88 texture units, but it's been upgraded with 14 uh, gigabit GDDR6 memory, which is similar to the 1660 TI. It's actually faster than the memory on the 1660 TI. So what you end up with is, not quite the same level of compute performance and texture fill rate and all that kind of good stuff, um, but more memory bandwidth than a TI. So performance in the cards I tested. Now I should mention there will be no like Founders Edition. Nvidia does have a reference spec, but like 90% of the cards coming out are factory overclocked, custom versions, bigger coolers. They're going to run faster than the Nvidia's reference spec. Both of the cards that I looked at. For the launch piece were factory overclocked with boost clocks up to 1860 megahertz depending on their mode and the, the reference spec only calls for 1785 so just about all the cards that you can buy are going to be faster than the reference spec if you look through the numbers what you'll see is performance is really close or sometimes better than a 1660 ti because of that memory bandwidth advantage but pricing it's it, being introduced at 229 so you know, it's between like 70 and like 100 bucks cheaper than some TIs. So the price is much closer to the 1660, but performance much closer to the TI. So all around, like really nice, affordable GPU. Seems like something Chris would like. What do you think, Britt? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and like based off of those, uh, the numbers and the pricing that you discussed, I feel like that sounds... Um pretty competitive and probably something also too that a lot of people would be interested particularly because of that pricing so it seems like they um seems pretty reasonable to me yeah, yeah it is now when when it hit you know like typically i'm in mad dash mode writing these launch articles right and i i will check amazon right at the last minute to see where all the competing uh where all the competing cards are at and as i was checking amazon the closest amd card was the RX 590. The RX 5700 non-XT is way more expensive. The The previous gen Vega 56 was way more expensive. The RX 590, though, was right in that $200 to $220 price range. Literally, as I'm writing my conclusion, I see Paul on the news team writing up a post about the huge price drops on the RX 590. <laughs> of course. So, yes, as, as the 1660 Super was being announced and all the articles were hitting... Uh, the RX 590 prices were dropping. So, yeah, th that's the great thing about competition in the GPU space is Absolutely. there's a, they can quickly shuffle. And since AMD's had those Polaris GPUs out for a couple of years, they have lots of room to, to juggle prices. Um, they've sold a ton of them already, so they can, they can react fairly quickly. 
And yeah, the, the, in terms of value, the 1660 Super, it's definitely got a strong value proposition. We had a couple of questions on the article saying, you know, would you buy a TI with the Super out right now? And now, technically, the TI, in some instances, is going to be faster, but not enough versus these factory overclocked Supers to really justify it. So I personally would save that 70 to 100 bucks and put it towards, you know, a bigger SSD or more memory. Um, the, so the Super is a really strong buy. And it basically, it didn't clean sweep the, the RX 590. There's some AMD optimized games like Strange Brigade where the RX 590 was really strong. But generally speaking, it's it's you know, significantly faster than the 590. So and, nice card. Um, yeah. Christopher, was there something that you wanted to add? Oh, um, yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I don't have the stream hard, Steam hardware surveys in front of me, but I mean, 1080p is still kind of the king of resolutions for gaming. So these cards that are targeting 1080p gaming are really where the value is at in the market. So, you know, it's great to see so much competition in this space. You know, we've got multiple cards from and from both sides that really fit that bill right now. So, uh, yes, this is kind of the sweet spot, I think, right now. Yeah, and competition is always good for the consumer. <coughs> Absolutely. I you believe. just actually reminded <laughs> me of something else while I cough in everybody's face. Oh, you're um, okay. So um, one thing that I didn't test because we sort of covered it and mentioned it in, in previous Turing articles Um these new uh, 1660s have the brand new NVIDIA encoding engine. So if you do want to stream your games out to Twitch or, or a site, it won't really hammer your CPU. So you can actually game and stream at the same time without oh, having nice. a monstrous powerful rig. Plus, with, uh, with the introduction of the drivers that support the 1660 Super, NVIDIA launched a bunch of new features. So... A while back when they launched, I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, uh, what's the name of the feature? Give me one second. I will get it right. So when NVIDIA launched Freestyle, they they included an image sharpener, uh, it, you know, image sharpening tool into their into their software that functions similarly to the image sharpening, the Radeon image sharpening that AMD introduced. Now with the latest drivers, it's just a drop down in the control panel. You can pick image sharpening, pick the level, you know, tweak and tune it. And it works on all uh, DX9, uh, 10, and 11 titles. Just, I'm sorry, 9, 11, and 12 titles. Um, just, it just works. I was just playing with it um, on one of the rigs here to see how it worked, and it looked really good. Now, in addition to the sharpening, NVIDIA integrated um, reshade filters into Freestyle and GeForce Experience as well. Now, if you haven't seen Reshade, I personally haven't used it very much, but it's it's really cool. Um, the standalone open source tool would basically inject itself into games and then gave you a bunch of controls over the imagery. So if you wanted to create like really cool imagery using a game engine and you know apply different shaders or just tweak and tune um, what the what the images looked like, it gave you a ton of freedom to do that. But it was kind of cumbersome. You had to actually inject it into the game. It, it was it required some technical prowess to pull off. Now it's just in GeForce Experience and and Freestyle, and because it could tip or like trigger some of those like anti cheating tools, it's, it doesn't support competitive games in GeForce Experience. But there's a bunch of stuff that it does support. It's a really cool, really cool feature. And then finally. Also, it's similar to AMD's uh, uh, low lag technology that it decreases uh, input lag. NVIDIA launched that a while back as well. But with this latest update, it now supports G-Sync. So, you know, typically you would disable V-Sync. Maybe you get some tearing on your display to get that ultra low latency um, benefits. Plus, you know, with these tweaks in the driver. Now you can have G-Sync enabled. So you don't have any tearing. You have all the benefits of G-Sync, but with that low input lag. So that feature has been added to the drivers as well. You know, NVIDIA didn't just launch a new GPU. It launched a new software suite that added some, some cool new features here. Awesome. Well, I think we've given a lot of time to NVIDIA today. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we yeah, probably, that's what happens when they launch two right? products. They launch so much. Yeah. So we should yeah. probably move on to, um, did we want to talk about Intel? I think we should um, okay. because it was today's big launch and it's right. been a process everybody's been talking about since May. Uh, I think May 26th is when they Intel officially first discussed it. So I, I finished up the launch piece for the Core i9 9900KS this morning. Um, I'm completely fried because I was still testing yesterday and basically wrote it all overnight. Um, 
Core i9 9900KS, Intel's brand new flagship for their mainstream processing platform. So it's not an HEDT, not a high-end desktop part for the giant sockets that like the Core i9 a 9980XE are in. It's for the LGA1151 socket. And, you know, Intel had the Core i9 9900K, that was their 8-core, 16-thread part, um, that could boost up to 5 gigahertz on a single core. The KS, you know, that S is basically stands for special edition. And what the KS can do is this processor can boost all eight cores to five gigahertz simultaneously. So, you know, that's a big deal for multi-threaded workloads. It also uh, affects power. And to pull this off, Intel has done basically two things. Now, I'm not sure if the software I use is was reporting properly, but according to CPU-Z, these chips are using a new stepping and new revision of the Coffee Lake die in the processor. So it's still technically Coffee Lake refresh, and it's the, you know, the same slab of silicon that's used in the 9900K, but it has been tweaked and revised somewhat. Intel was you know, tuning the dials on the manufacturing process and potentially made some changes um, to the design to get that new stepping. But um, it resulted in a chip that easily the fastest eight core processor you can buy also the fastest single thread performance of any processor i've tested it ended up first place in every gaming and graphics test that i ran and first place in like the overall score for general productivity in pc mark that said if you look at multi-threaded stuff like something, uh, say, a Ryzen 9, uh, 12 core, Ryzen 9, 3900X is good at, there's no way the 8 core chip is going to catch that 12 core. So versus AMD's latest architecture with 12 cores in something like Cinebench or Pavre or video encoding, the 9900KS is strong, but it's not catching the 12. It's not going to make up for a 4 core deficit. It just doesn't have that much clock to make up for it. But really strong chip, you know, so it, it really it's going to depend on what you use your PC for. If you want like the best day to day tooling around your desktop, best, in my opinion, now this is probably going to trigger some folks. If you want the best gaming processor, uh, if, if you're not a huge, crazy multitasker and your workloads are more lightly threaded, the 9900KS is arguably the best chip you can buy. If you're a big multitasker, you're doing, you know, big video encodes. Um, you might, if you're doing some rendering, like if you like working in, in 3D tools and rendering graphics, you're probably going to be better off with a Ryzen that has more cores for a similar price. But, you know, this is a, a killer processor from Intel. Did you guys get a chance to see the numbers? I know the article's only been up for a few hours. Did you guys get a chance no, to see it? No, I haven't gotten a chance. Christopher, do you have any comments on oh, it? Oh, yeah, I, I looked through it earlier. I mean, obviously, oh, okay. it looks like a nice, <laughs> Not the price. a nice chip, but, you know, uh, Shadow of War here has some some good gains over the other uh, processors, but when you're looking at it, this is 1080p with medium quality, and if you're playing at 1080p medium quality with a 9900KS, uh, uh, then I mean I almost think you're doing it wrong because um, either you're, you're going to be looking for a very you need a very high refresh rate, like 240 hertz monitor. Um, or else, <laughs> I don't know what. Um, so I feel like for that, for the little edge you get, and, and the other benchmarks are, are very, very close, often within a frame or two once you get into higher resolutions and higher GPU loads because you're pushing the graphic settings up. Um, so for that, for that little bit of margin there, I feel like your money is better spent on something like the 3700 or 3900X um, from AMD because you're also getting that multi-threaded experience when you need it and you may not need it now but you may decide hey i'm enjoying gaming a lot with this system and now i want to share it with my friends try my luck with you know getting a, a twitch or mixer or whatever following um and you can do that down the road without reinvesting by going with once again different strokes for different folks right i mean if like marco said if you have a pretty light load this could be a really good investment whereas if you're talking about someone is planning on streaming gaming or something like that or whatever a lot of video editing and coding and whatnot then perhaps yes they want to invest later but um i think marco has a fair point about it being perhaps a really good middle ground for someone who just is looking for everyday activities right yeah well so, and just to get back to chris's uh, point about the 1080p numbers 
that's like a debate that goes on between manufacturers, tech press, um, and all, you know, and a bunch of, you know, people in the know, like, why are you running low res game tests? Nobody runs the game that way when you buy a high end processor. I agree. Um, nobody's going to do that. But what it does show is the potential of the architecture and the chip. So when the, when the processor is unleashed, the, the 9900KS is technically the fastest. Now, if you shift that bottleneck to the GPU, like the 4K tests, you'll see in our charts, it's literally flat. Like all the fastest ones had like the same frame rate because it's the GPU holding it back. That becomes a GPU benchmark. But I include both to try to appease as many readers as I can. People that are going to call me a nut job for having 1080p medium numbers, and then people wondering, why don't you have 4K numbers? Christopher. I understand (laughs) why the benchmark is there. I'm just saying that it seems like it's, uh, you know, a a benchmark in pursuit of something that's, you know, what other practical workloads are going to take advantage of that difference? Because... So there's lots of stuff. Lots of stuff is not multi-threaded, right? So right. Right. having that single thread, um, strong single thread performance is a big deal. And that basically what that strong single thread performance amounts to is a snappier, lower latency experience during day-to-day stuff. So when you're tooling, just tooling around the PC, it's that really smooth, fast experience that's tough to quantify and that benchmarks don't show that this processor gives you. Now, we also have, before we move on, we have some questions. Um, uh, Devon is asking me which I prefer for gaming, AMD or Intel. So it it, it depends. My personal (laughs) workload, you know, my, my use case, I'm trying to get more into video. I typically have a bunch of apps open, Photoshop, Office, you know, Word, Excel, a bunch of browser tabs, um, chat windows, Skype. I, I literally have a bunch of stuff running all the time. And the personal rig I built, if you go back a few weeks on the channel, you'll see, I actually uh, chronicled the video. I built myself a Threadripper rig. Um, so personally, I'm on an AMD rig. Now, which do I prefer for gaming? If I had the ability to just build, well, I'm spoiled, I can do this, but I don't have the room for it. If I was just building a dedicated gaming PC, I would totally buy the 9900KS if I had the budget. It's, in my opinion, it's the best gaming processor you could buy today, right? As Chris mentioned, it's tough to quantify. And if you're running games on a 4K monitor, maybe you don't always realize the benefit of it. But it has the potential to be the fastest for gaming. And that's what I would want in the system. So, and plus the platform is really mature. Like the Z390s have been out for a while. It just... You plug it in, install your stuff. You know your system's going to work. So yeah, I would totally like the 9900KS. Um, budget gamer, I would totally go for a Ryzen Five because, as mm-hmm. Chris mentioned, you're gonna you're gonna want those because you can get a, an eight core, sixteen thread part, super cheap. Plus, the other benefits of of the Ryzen platform is the newer chipset. The processors themselves support PCIe four. So you, you're you're basically ready for the future, uh, future GPUs, future storage technology with the more affordable processor. So for a budget gamer, I would probably go with the best Ryzen five that right. I could afford. So we to also give have some, to give some points back to Intel, though. Um, there is still a lot of software that just supports Intel better. It just works better on Intel. Like I've got um, some surveillance camera software that I use at work. And it supports H.264 on both platforms, but it'll only support H.265 on Intel and NVIDIA GPU systems. Um, AMD is just kind of out in the cold there. So if I want to use that better codec, lower uh, bandwidth, higher quality, however you want to quantify it, you know, you're kind of out in the cold with, with AMD. So it's not a wholly performance-driven equation either. Yep, that's true. And then we had a um, another question about did Intel fix any of the security bugs um, with the KS? They actually fixed a bunch of the Spectre and Meltdown bugs with the Coffee Lake refresh with the 9900K, and that carries over because this is the same architecture. So yes, they did. And Anything like else you guys? Add, Go ahead. Oh, sure. sorry. Yeah, I wanted to add to that. Um, if you are interested in an in unboxing, we do have a video both in our article at hothardware.com <laughs> as well as I believe on YouTube. So if that's your thing, we have that too. Oh yeah, uh, Intel had two embargoes for that uh, for that chip. Yeah, I had, I had the 
the video uh, unboxing and then the full article to do in, in addition to the four launch pieces I've done this week. So it's been really fun. Go watch them <laughs> just just for Marco's sake. Just do it. Just do it for Marco, okay? He's yes, had a rough do week, it. guys. And then while you're watching, <laughs> like and subscribe like. and hit the reminder bell because right. we're cool as hell and this is fun. And They're you get cool. to see Brittany and Chris. I know you don't want to see my mug on here. But <laughs> no, Brittany and Chris. good. Um, and also, too, <laughs> subscribe, right? Always subscribe. And that's how you're going. When you hit the notification bell, that's when you're going to know not only when we release uh, videos like the unboxing, but also when we are doing the stream. So it's, you know, it's valuable in both ways. I feel like I want to be a seasoned YouTuber and say, smash that reminder smash bell. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Can so we get this to a million likes? <laughs> Right. Oh man, I would love to get to a million likes. That All right, so awesome. let, let's move on. Now, this is something that deserves a million likes. First, we'll quickly talk about the review because the review system is not the one we're giving away. But this past week, um, we reviewed the 20th anniversary Falcon Northwest Talon PC. Um, the particular one we looked at was a really high end setup, dual uh, GTX, I'm sorry, dual RTX 2080s with a uh, AMD Ryzen 3900X. Uh, NVMe storage and RAID. The thing was pulling like over six gigs a second on the storage setup. So just an in insane rig. Um, Falcon is one of the OG system builders. So I'm going to date myself, but I would be in high school uh, in in the early 90s. My God, I'm so <laughs> flipping through. I won't you know, tell you where I was in the early 90s. <laughs> then how about that? Yeah, you were still in your still in your mother's womb. <laughs> no, I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, i'd be flipping through my computer magazines back then looking at falcon northwest builds like they have been around forever yes, um just yeah. literally one of the premier system builders for decades the company's been around 27 20 almost 28 years and the talon it's the 20th anniversary of the talon coincidentally it's our 20th anniversary as well so uh the rig that our man chris l not the chris that's on the stream another chris uh reviewed the system it obviously kicked ass. It was it's the most recent, most up to date uh, gaming system that we've reviewed, and one of the few ones with a multi GPU setup and NVMe RAID and fast memory and robust cooling. Like it really does everything right. The the, the wiring is just mint. Just a beautiful system all around. So. I'm not going to point out any specific benchmarks because it basically won almost across the board, except for when it was, you know, some sort of a CPU bottleneck, some sort of tight benchmark. But just a killer rig all around that looks absolutely gorgeous. Britt, what do you think of that that machine when you look at it? Is that gorgeous or what? It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it is beautiful. Christopher, do you have any comments on it? I mean, I really like the accented LEDs on it. Um, it's not going overkill. It's clean. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a very nice looking build. Yeah. yeah, yeah so as, as soon as it sounds, it's, it's nice that it's not black and red, right? Like, I feel like that tends to be the classic color combo. So to see the green and the blue is actually kind of a nice change, I would think. Yeah. So, and you know, it's funny. Um, Falcon really resisted the RGB trend as long as they could. And <laughs> sort of gave in um with this rig but like they didn't overdo it at all it's a couple no, of it's fans very look, understated yeah like i i personally if you look at my, my threadripper build um i i called the video the threadripper build you'll love to hate because i really went conservative on the look i used just a simple fractal design case and from the outside if you're not looking in the window you you wouldn't think it's some crazy monstrous rig so i like that understated look to a piece yeah I, I agree yeah and I, I, I just I agree. really I really dig this setup. So the setup we looked at in the review, kind of pricey, fifty six hundred bucks, not for everybody. But if you're looking for a monstrous gaming PC, it's obviously gorgeous. Now, if you don't have the money to buy something like that and you'd like to win one, what? we're yes, <laughs> yes, we are giving one of these systems away. So we announced the giveaway uh, last week. So Falcon. Falcon Northwest, hot hardware, the folks at um, at Obsidian and AMD, we all sort of kind of put our noodles together because it's AMD's 50th anniversary. It's our 20th anniversary, 20th anniversary of the Talon and the hot new game, The Outer Worlds, just launched on, I believe it was Friday last week. Yeah. So we have a 20th anniversary Talon with a awesome paint job using some artwork from The Outer Worlds. And now this particular rig, also powered by Ryzen, um, it has a, a Ryzen 7 3800X 8-core, 
a top end Radeon 7, so it's not Navi, but still technically AMD's fastest gaming GPU with 16 gig uh, Radeon 7. Um, the Asus Crosshair motherboard, that gorgeous Talon case, plus all the goodies that you'd get buying a uh, you know a full size a, a fully equipped system like this. And literally, we're giving it away. All you have to do, you got to jump through a couple of hoops, but they're really simple. Visit a couple of Facebook pages, like a couple of Twitter feeds, and we are going to just randomly pick a winner. And no, each, nothing, each, nothing crazy. Each of these on the screen there gives you a chance to win. Yes. Right. So there are a lot of entries, considering the contest isn't a week old. I think we're, you know, we're approaching 13,000 entries. Yeah, almost 13,000. Um, but so, yeah, there are 13, you can get 13 opportunities to win. And I think that's important to add, too. So even if you like all of them, it's not just, it doesn't just count as one entry, it counts as 13. So that definitely increases your odds if you do go and participate in the giveaway. Yeah, absolutely. So we, yeah. we like to give away stuff uh, as often as possible. It's, it's hard to pull together something as you know high end and extensive as this on a regular basis but you know the stars aligned here uh this this machine it's it's awesome like custom paint work this thing is worth a damn fortune and literally all you got to do is like a couple of pages visit a couple of pages um and that's it you know we just want all of the participants um you know i want you guys to give all the participants a little bit of love and literally, we'll just randomly pick a winner. Nothing crazy going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, it's only open to U.S. and Canadian residents. It's just <clears throat> too much complication getting this thing shipped overseas. Um, but, yeah, super simple and just a gorgeous machine. Definitely. Well, um, Marco, how about I sign us out so we can give your poor voice a rest? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You've been I know carrying I'm, the stream today. <laughs> I'm sorry. My, I, I can tell that you know, the, the drugs are wearing off and I'm oh, sounding fine. funny. So yeah, no, you know, I, I think unless, cast. unless you guys want to throw anything in, Chris, anything you want to add? Uh, we all good. good? Good. Cool. Okay. Great. Right. Go ahead. Close it yeah. out. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for your questions. Um, as usual, you can find us at hothardware.com. All of these articles are available on there as well as the giveaway. Um, please like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll know that when we are live and when we have posted a video. And we hope that you guys all have a good week and a safe Halloween. See you Perfect. next time. <laughs> awesome.